fair means I can't find the thing that you said was here. Like, the header files are all about, like, you know, telling the rest of the program, like, hey, this thing exists. And you're like, hey, France exists. And you're like, awesome, cool. Um, where is it? It's like, ah, oh, it's over in Europe. And then, you know, then, like, you go over to Europe or something, and it's like, well, France isn't here. What the hell? You said it was right here at these coordinates. I'd be like, well, I, I only had the map that said it was there. And you're like, well, shit. That's basically because you forgot to include France in your public dependency module names. So when when your program compiled the world, it was like, oh, this thing, it's not even included. We'll just leave that alone. We're not going to include that at all. Awesome. So we got that RHI render core. It compiled. Awesome. That's cool. Our building of our textures is going to happen. Um, we're going to get a texture. It should be white right now. So we should be able to just... We should be able to run this, actually, and it'll... Now we need to actually call build on it. So it's... Let's actually call it from inside of here with, you know, garbage data. Let's actually make a function here. Let's call... Um, so clear texture and that'll reset our texture to white or whatever the hell so we're going to want to call u dash can graphic utils and then the, the method we just made which is this update render region so we're going to pass in m texture um, MIP index, and I'm going to refer to this guy's example code here. So create echo texture, he's got create transients, update resource, and then he calls data.init on all this crap, and then he passes in zero for the MIP level. Um, zero for the MIP level, he's got one for the region. Um, We suppose, supposedly what we need here is an update texture region 2D on here, like this. So we just, I'm just going to call this texture region. Actually, just gonna have So the texture region is going to be something that we create. I'm actually going to call build texture here with true. All right, so we're going to say like if. Yeah, we're just going to say texture region equals new. F update texture region. This is something somebody else has made. Zero, 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 zero. And then what is it? Our texture size X and texture size Y. So that'll be our texture width and texture height.
and we'll call update resource. Interesting. So right here, this guy has an array of colors for the actual data that he passes in to write to this thing. So when he was doing this, what is their texture data length that he's using? Let's see, this is going to be pixels. For every pixel in our texture we're going to write, it's going to be m texture width times m texture height multiplied by the number of bytes um, per pixel. So let's actually have an n32 m bytes per pixel. Uh, make that a u property. And we'll initialize that to 4. All right, so that'll be right there. So we have this for every pixel. We're gonna add it in there. And I'm just referencing this um, forum post on how to use this. If you're wondering where I'm getting it from, you can just Google it, which would be setting up dynamic setting up dynamic texture in the Unreal Engine forms. I don't want to post whatever. I will. If, if you're wondering what I'm looking at, you can look at it right there. So let's see, he adds all the colors in there and then he calls update texture regions. And he passes in the texture, zero for the MIPS, one for pitch, he passes in the texture region. You know, let's see if m texture built equals false, then we're going to say build texture right there. All right, so m texture region, and then. And what the hell is the pitch? Like, they have the bytes times the size x and all that stuff. Okay, so the reason for a 4-byte thing is because we're actually using F color. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to document this. 4 bytes means we're using an F color. RGBA, 8 bytes each. Otherwise, we could use 1 byte each. And that would be fine.
and this is this is wrong here then and basically we can also just call Yeah, this texture width times texture height here, because basically we have that array of colors. That's fine. Then he calls the texture, and then he has the bytes times the size x is the pitch. So m bytes per pixel multiplied by the the width. Bytes per pixel is that. And then we want to cast to a UN8 pointer data dot get type typed data. And then false do not agree. And one of the other things here this T array of F colors needs to not be on the stack, otherwise it's gonna not be available during the render call. So we need to put it on the class. Let's just say, you know, temp data. Alright, so all we have to do is make this callable from blueprints and if we got this all compiled out properly, um, what we'll be able to do is call we'll be able to call this thing and with clear texture and it'll just snag it for us. It'll make it, kick it off, make it blue, because I believe this is blue, RGBA, so it'll be totally blue texture. We'll be good to go. So let's see, what's it pissed off about? Unrecognized type F update texture region 2D. Well, what the hell is this texture region 2D thing then? Which file do you exist in, Mr. Texture Region 2D? Uh, struct, it is in RHI somewhere, it's in RHI.h. So, um, the, it's a pointer, so I can just forward the clear. Okay, I can't use this because it must be a U-class, U-struct, or a U-enum. Okay, so it's just, it's not an actual Unreal Managed object. That's fine, that's totally fine. Well then, 
Well, then I'm not super happy with this. So I'm not going to have it be a pointer. So sorc x equals zero and texture region dot sorc y is zero and texture region dot width equals on texture width and m texture region dot height equals on texture height. All right, we'll pass in the address of the texture region right there, and we should be good to go. I still wonder, though, if this object goes out of scope and gets garbage collected on the exact same frame as this object. Though I don't expect we'll be blowing up any lakes. Um, I wonder what would happen to the memory that it's referencing. It's got to do something with pointers, though. To take them off over to the render thread, it probably copies it copies it over. I would have to guess. There's got to be just so many bugs that would happen otherwise. I guess get typed data in their example. I wonder when this was posted. 2015, so maybe they changed tier a little bit there. I'm just gonna do a few things real quick.
All right, cool. Just verifying my email address there with Unreal. All right, so we should be able to call clear texture, snag the texture, and pass it in, and then use it. So what we're going to do is just hook that up real quick inside of our material. And I think I'm pretty much done for, for now once we get that working. Good kind of stopping point. Like we've got our components, we've got our textures, and we've got our game plan for how we're going to do our water. And then we have a whole lot of work to do to actually get it working. But that's fine. Okay, so on our construction script with this thing, we've created our water surface and all this stuff. So let's grab our material here. Let's grab a texture sample. Um, let's, yeah, just grab our texture coordinate right in here. Texture sample is normals. Now we want linear color. Let's just see, is there none? Let's grab a color and we're gonna throw that into our, yeah, we're gonna multiply it by the base color. And this, that's a bug that happens where that texture was all sorts of freaking out there. And it's because like the texture sampler node doesn't save properly. Now what is this crap? Texture sample missing input texture. Yeah, okay, here we go. We just need a basic texture. So we have roughness is zero and all that stuff. All right, so this will be watercolor, texture sample, convert the texture object, convert the parameter. All right, so we will. I'm gonna convert this to a parameter. Yeah, I guess texture object parameter is what you gotta do. That's not very helpful. Hit the down arrow and it just starts freaking out on you. Alright, so this will be the. Let's just say test texture. And why don't we just go ahead and have like. Let's have a, a debugging mode right on this. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to have a parameter that's called um, test weight. And we are going to take test weight and we're going to do 1 minus text, test weight. And we're going to multiply that by, you know, basically our color multiplied by that. which should be our normal thing and um, then we've got test weight and we're going to multiply that test weight by this color here so what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to toggle between the test texture and quote unquote the normal color of the object by um, just changing our test weight.
So we'll have this thing where the test texture can override whatever we throw over on the left here to figure out what color our thing should be. All right, test weight should start off as zero. This is, this is, and this is good. All right, so we need a few variables here. We need watercolor, test weight, and test texture set up properly. All right, so this one's going to be um, test height map. This one will be test flow field. Test dynamic flow field. And then test dynamic obstacles and this is we need test stuff in there so we'll basically be able to toggle a button in the blueprint and it'll switch between us seeing the water surface versus seeing the textures that it's referencing so we can kind of you know see what the hell we're doing and because I'm just I already know for a fact we're gonna have I'm gonna have so much problem so many problems dealing with this water stuff that I just want to just start off by making some debugging. Uh, toggle this to see the height map data. Toggle this to see the flow field data. Toggle this to see the dynamic flow field data. Toggle this to see the dynamic obstacle data. Right, compile that and we'll set our defaults. They should all be false. Alright. Set up shader variables. Alright, so let's categorize these with debugging as the category. Alright, so we got our material instance. We're going to want to set our set texture parameter value for test texture. And we'll want our set scalar parameter value. Okay, so. Watercolor. And I guess we'll need a color in here, so let's grab a color, and watercolor. Compile that, let's snag it from here. Let's copy it, throw it in here. There we go. Excellent. So this will be the color of the water. And I'm just kind of organizing as I'm going along here. That's water. Awesome. All right. So. Let's grab our variables here. So basically, if any of these things are checked, then we are going to do stuff. Actually, let's throw these branches like way over there. We're gonna want the set 
set vector parameter. This is going to be for material collections. It's set vector parameter value on a material. Yeah, okay, so this will be watercolor is what we'll set first. So let's snag that. Okay, so if any of these things are true, then we need to set our test weight to 1. So if that's true, then we go here. Otherwise, what we're going to do is set it to false. And then we're going to need to do some shenanigans right here. Um, let's just have a local variable here, which we're going to call, this should be a texture. Texture 2D reference. This will be text. So at the end of this, we're going to set this texture, and it's going to be called test texture. And test weight is what's over here. So we need a few branches like this. And what we're going to be doing is calling set. What we're going to be calling get texture. So test height map. Test flow field, test dynamic object. So we'll snag all this. All right, so this will be testing the height map. So we want to get the static height map. And we're going to call clear texture on it. So we'll do this. like so. All right, so this is the flow field. Then we've got the dynamic flow field. And the dynamic obstacle. Probably an easier way to do this. I really don't care. All right, so we should be able to now basically create all of our textures and all of this stuff, and um, our water surface is going to look proper. So let's make sure everything is saved um, with our assets before we do this. And let's, because who knows, we might just crash the hell out of this thing. So let's actually walk into it the first time we actually do any of this. So we should be able to say, test the height map. All right, the texture is not built, so we're gonna build this texture. So size is that, pixel format is blah. PF B8, G8, R8, A8, that looks correct. Lock, read, write, bulk, blah, create transient. All right, so we built our texture, updated it.
we've initialized it. The application is in break mode. There's no code to show because all threads are executing external code. What? What's the damn call stack? Well, that's why we saved everything. So what the hell? This temp data f f color is all sorts of screwed up. So f color color. And 32 num. I'm pretty sure it got past this point. We're in a development mode for editors, so some of this can lie to us. It's like, I'm totally executing this code, and it's like, well, I'm actually executing this other code. The number is 262144. So I guess it's trying to allocate a bunch of memory? I mean, I wouldn't think it would take that long for it to allocate a 512 by 512 texture in F colors. Like, it's just a goddamn F color, you know? Like, it should just be a mem. set or whatever the hell.
well, maybe if we just make it really small, um, maybe we need to do something else for this. I do not understand why it's freaking out over allocating only like 26,000 F colors. That's really not that much data. Even that was a little bit of a pause. So what exactly is this freaking out about? I, this is part of what I hate about all these macros and this garbage. We didn't set the regions? Yeah, that could do it. Alright, well, we'll see if this works. I'm a bit concerned about the allocation time there. I mean, it's just a 512 by 512 texture. You should be able to make that, you know, it's just a, it's an array of linear colors. Like, why is it taking 2 million years for that to allocate, and why, why is the engine lock up when you do? Is there something wrong with that init function in T-Ray? Alright. So we got the texture 2D too. And there we are. It's a big blue texture. We can uncheck it. So we can turn that on and off. Alright, let's... Let's see if there's anything that I'm doing wrong here. I think it's... Let 
let's do 512 by 512 right here. And what I'm gonna do is m temp data that add uninitialized. Let's just see if we have any other sort of weirdness going on here. Like, we should at least be able to break point and then walk through the loop, if nothing else. And see if there's some weird thing going on with allocating memory or something. I don't know, I wouldn't... I don't understand. It's not that much memory. I just don't understand. And I'm, and I'm looking at my memory consumption, and my memory consumption is not high. Like, I've got, you know, 23 gigabytes. Unreal's not using that much. It's like, this should be a couple megs. That's, that's zero. That's nothing. I mean, I could... I could download a couple frickin' megabytes of, you know, information. Like, video information coming from Twitch. And a much faster speed than this damn thing appears to allocate it. Alright, add uninitialized. Oh, we didn't even... Yeah, see, I could... I iterated through this shit faster. Alright, something is wrong with the init function for... for this thing. Which is really scary that <laughs> the init function's messed up somehow. Well, let's see if there's something else going on. Maybe the allocation is stomping over some memory somewhere else and causing something else to freak the hell out. Which is also incredibly scary. That was one of the things, like freshman year, working on game projects and every single time there would be a crash it would be in the display class for our like for our text-based game and the reason for that was the only thing in the entire game that used any sort of memory was the display class so whenever somebody would write some horrible memory leak or some bullshit memory access function it would inevitably make the display cra class crash because that was pretty much where the memory in the game was. So if you're ever going to overwrite any memory, it was almost, you know, 100% guarantee that if you overwrite something, you're going to be overwriting the display stuff. So it's pretty funny. And it'd be this one guy who was no notorious for um, notorious for breaking stuff all the time. How come that's a different color? That's uh, that's kind of screwy. Why is it teal? But yeah, there was one guy who just, like, he always wrote horrible memory code and stuff like that. And he'd always go to the other guy on the team who wrote the display class and be like, It's crashing in the display again! And the guy's just, he gets pissed off eventually. He's just like, it's not the fucking display class, alright man? You don't know what the hell you're doing. That would be the same person who would blame the compiler for everything. Be like, no, the compiler's wrong. Be like, dude, you're a freshman in college. The compiler is not wrong. You are an idiot. And you just don't know it yet. But 
but but this one time it actually was a compiler error bug. It's like, yeah, one once, once, which means every single time there's something you don't understand, it's obviously the compiler is messed up. All right, so there's something screwy going on here with the destruction. The it's probably not. It's gonna be this. Um, Sense the size of the array, filling it with the given element. I mean, theoretically, it should work, but we're getting weird results here with, you know, a function that I... This should be good to go. So unless there's something really horribly screwed up like just look at this it's just new element of type why the hell is it calling new oh it's just yeah okay I get it We don't really want that though, that's kind of silly. Hello, Morton Bart. Bartness. I am working on some water stuff at the moment. Okay, so obviously something else was screwed up and um, I'm just suffering from temporary insanity. It may be permanent insanity, but so that'll be good. And that is the right number. All right, so obviously I just had something screwed up. So that's perfectly fine. Awesome. So, did you see the one Alessa made? I do not believe I know what you are talking about. So, explain yourself. I do not know an Alessa. And if I should, well, I'm sorry. So let's take a look at it. Uh, you can PM me the link and uh, I can post it for you after I double check it. Alright, so we can click on our water and yeah, there we go. We can see all of our different height map stuff. And change the color of our water. And all that. Cool. So, alright, means we'll be working on the water here. And I'm pretty much just about to head out of here. I wanted to mess with those textures real quick and um, get that working, which has been successful. Because I've been streaming for almost five hours here. And I pretty much 
should probably take shouldn't work every day all the time All right, so we got all this. Um, what else should I do? I'll save it. Let's see what this did to the content for our level if it made it any bigger. No, it didn't. Ah, uh, this is a stylized shader for a different water. So if people wanted to take a look at that, So some some stylized shading. All right, yeah, that's kind of, I guess, what we're, uh, what I'm kind of working on is kind of exactly the same sort of stuff, to be honest. <laughs> it looks kind of like jello, <laughs> like plop, all that stuff. That's pretty cool. But yeah, that is, that's pretty cool. I'll snag a link for that and maybe if I, uh, maybe there's something in there you can use. Well, the cool thing there is obviously, like, one of the things that I've been thinking about, I don't know if you've been online the whole time, but we came down to four different things we need. We need, like, a height map sort of texture so we can detect where the shore is because we kind of broke, broke down the pieces of what we needed into like we're gonna need like this is the scene here this is my cave drawings of this scene with like our waterfall and then this is supposed to be like a waterfall out and it was like all right so we need to like have ripples so we need like a ripple map and then we can those ripples can flow based on a flow field which we can pre-calculate the flow field by like adding objects of like water enters here and water leaves over here